The Western nations currently field a wide range of land-based warplanes, most of them designed by a single nation, but others resulting from international programs. Modern Combat Aircraft One highlights the most important, assessing their capabilities and pinpointing their significant features. Starting with the U.S. Air Force's strategic and medium bomber fleet, we then look at leading international multi-role types, ranging from the F.A. 18 Hornet to the Saab Viggen. Dedicated interceptors, such as the F-15 Eagle and Tornado ADV, are then covered. After a look at Northrop's two private venture fighters, we conclude with ground attack aircraft ranging from the V-Stall Harrier to the tank-busting A-10. Boeing's B-52 Stratofortress has been the U.S. Strategic Air Command's big stick for more than 30 years first as a high-level nuclear bomber, and then from the early 60s as a low-level weapon equipped with bombs, then with supersonic missiles, and now in its final B-52 G and H variants with a mix of defense suppression missiles and AGM-86 subsonic air-launched cruise missiles. The B-52 is complemented by the FB-111A supersonic medium-range bomber, the KC-135 flight refueling tanker for truly global capability with massive war loads, and essential reconnaissance platforms such as the subsonic Lockheed U-2 series and the incredible Mach 3 Lockheed SR-71. The B-52 G and H are not modified in any very obvious way, but the mass of aerials and blisters on these models provides evidence of their electronic developments. The most important of these are the electro-optical viewing system for low-level flight and attack, the Phase 6 electronic countermeasures and the new digital navigation and bombing system. The mighty beast is in the evening of its life and is to be replaced in the penetration role by the B-1. But because of its combination of payload and range, the B-52 still has a future as a cruise missile carrier and finally in the maritime support role with Harpoon anti-ship missiles. operates at the sharp end of NATO's defenses. The most advanced models lurking in bomb-proof shelters on three British bases and older aircraft waiting in the USA for forward deployment. Their task? Strike far into any aggressor's rear to destroy the communications vital for any major offensive into Western Europe. Nicknamed the Aardvark and capable of Mach 2 plus speeds at altitude, the F-111 was the world's first operational swing-wing combat aircraft. But the type suffered many problems with its structure, avionics and power plant when it was introduced in the late 1960s, though successive fixes and variants have cured these failures. The two-seat F-111 has now taken off as the Western world's best long-range all-weather attack aircraft. The F-111 has a small weapons bay as well as six underwing pylons and can carry nuclear bombs. In general, though, it is used for conventional weapons up to a maximum of 31,500 pounds. Particularly important are laser-guided bombs such as these underwing paveway bombs. The Aardvark has other sophisticated avionics, including internal and external electronic countermeasures, but just as significant are the inertial navigation system, Doppler navigation, large attack radar, and the highly capable terrain-following radar, 
all vital for low-level navigation and attack over the F-111's combat radius of some 1,500 miles on internal fuel. The terrain following avionics give the F-111 crew the opportunity to select day and night all-weather automatic terrain following at any chosen height above the ground. This is a feature of great tactical importance as the F-111 tries to operate over hostile territory at high speed and low height. In this low-level mode, the retractable pave tack belly pack comes into its own. The system's forward-looking infrared sensor allows targets to be acquired under most weather conditions, and the laser permits target designation even as the aircraft is leaving the area. Here, the variable geometry of the aircraft also plays its part. The use of maximum sweep allowing high speed without the bumpy ride that would otherwise wear down the crew in low-level flight. The Rockwell B-1B entered service in 1986 as the swing wing replacement for the USAF's B-52 in the strategic penetration role. The whole system was born in the 1960s as a Mach 2 high-level bomber, but was cancelled by President Carter and was finally revived by President Reagan as a modestly supersonic, long-range, low-level bomber and missile carrier. Just 100 are to be built. The B-1B is now tailored to high subsonic penetration of enemy airspace at low level over any terrain. The electronically controlled ride ensures minimum fatigue for the crew and the airframe, complete with its maximum 80,000 pounds of weapons. The airframe and engine nacelles are designed to reduce the B-1B's radar signature, which is only one hundredth that of the B-52. The B-1B is thus a fairly stealthy aircraft in the modern sense of the word. The complex airframe and afterburning turbofan power plant are matched by the mission avionics, operated by just two of the four-man crew. The offensive system permits highly accurate navigation and weapon delivery, while the impressive ALQ-161 defensive system automatically monitors and neutralizes enemy electronic sensors. The B-1B can carry a huge conventional warload, but is designed for strategic nuclear weapons. In its definitive form, the B-1B will be able to carry an internal and external load of 26 freefall thermonuclear bombs, 46 SRAM defense suppression missiles, or 30 air-launched cruise missiles, or a mix of these. The key to the B-1B's performance is its use of swing wings with an advanced fuselage of great capacity but low drag. The combination provides good field performance and long range with the wings forward, together with the supersonic dash performance and low level ride comfort with the wings swept. In short, the B-1B offers national deterrent capability beyond that suggested by the type's small numbers. Viggen is the Swedish for Thunderbolt, and this is a graphic description of the capabilities of this classic warplane, which began to enter service in the early 1970s. The Viggen was tailored aerodynamically and electronically to Sweden's exacting operational requirements in several variants. The AJ-37 for attack, the SF-37 for low-level overland reconnaissance, the SH-37 for overwater reconnaissance, the two-seat SK-37 for operational conversion, and finally, the second-generation JA-37 for interception.
The Vigan generally carries seven external pylons, sufficient for a 15,400 pound war load. Smaller loads are more common, however, so that electronic countermeasures can also be accommodated in external pods. Various air-to-surface and anti-ship missiles can be carried, but bombs and unguided rockets can be more cost-effective when delivered with the accuracy made possible by the Vigan's precise handling, radar, inertial navigation system, and pilot's head-up display. This basic fit is complemented in the JA-37 interceptor by Skyflash air-to-air missiles used with a head-down display and very advanced pulse Doppler radar. Operations from dispersed sites, including any 500-meter length of straight road, are a cornerstone of Sweden's air defense policy. Only thus, the Swedes reckon, can the effects of preemptive strikes on their vulnerable airfields be overcome. An instrument landing system, stole performance from the canard layout, and thrust reversal on the after-burning turbofan engine all fit the Viggen neatly into this aspect of the System 37 weapon system of which the Viggen is the aircraft component. System 37 covers the Viggen and all its ground support. This means that on a formal air base or country road, the Viggen can be serviced, repaired, refueled and rearmed swiftly under all weather conditions. The sturdy airframe and landing gear permit fast taxiing and vulnerable turnaround time is thus kept as short as possible. Within its operational context, the Viggen reigns supreme. When France in 1973 refused to deliver Mirage 5 fighters purchased by Israel, that country pressed on with a program already underway for a Mirage variant. This led first to the Nesher, little more than a Mirage 5 copy with Israeli avionics, and then to the Kafir C-1, upgraded model with the more powerful US J-79 turbojet and more advanced avionics. The C-1 was soon succeeded by the radically improved Kafir C-2 with dog-toothed outer wings, fixed foreplanes, nose strakes, and a modern cockpit. The result? is a versatile, single-seat, multi-role fighter and reconnaissance aircraft. There is also a two-seat electronic warfare version. Low-speed handling and combat agility are impressive, and the C-2 can operate from much shorter runways than its predecessors. The Kafir C-2 is a genuine multi-role type, though it may lack multi-mode nose radar, as it is intended for the clear weather role. The type has a head-up display working with an inertial navigation and either of two advanced weapon delivery systems. And in addition to its pair of 30 mm DEFA cannon, the Kafir can carry some 9,500 pounds of weapons on nine hardpoints. US or Israeli air-to-air -air missiles are standard, and other weapons including HE and cluster bombs, napalm, rocket and cannon pods, and air-to-surface or anti-radar missiles. One or two hard points generally carry a defensive pod to complement the Kafir's advanced internal systems. The Kafir C2 has been extensively used in combat and built up a fine record in its air-to-surface and air-to-air -air roles. Development has continued, recent years seeing the introduction of the Kafir C7, this has a more advanced cockpit of the hands-on throttle and stick variety. Provision for smart weapons, such as laser-guided bombs, with a new digital nav attack system and pulsed Doppler radar. More fuel and in-flight refueling capability. Within its context, the Kafir remains an excellent warplane. The Mirage 2000 air superiority fighter is clear evidence of France's faith in the tailless Delta layout. In this instance, 
Dassault Breguet has produced a thoroughly modern machine with advanced aerodynamics and a fly-by-wire control system to overcome the drag limitations of the earlier Mirage 3 series. The result is a Mach 2 aircraft able to take full advantage of air-to-air -air missiles such as the short-range but very maneuverable Magic air-to-air -air missile seen here. Computer-linked leading-edge slats and trailing-edge elevons controlling an inherently unstable design make the Mirage 2000 extremely agile at altitude without the energy losses suffered by earlier mirages. But the large wing and its light loading make the fighter less adept at low level than competitors in the same weight class. Apart from its two 30 millimeter internal cannon, the Mirage 2000 has nine external hardpoints able to lift 11,000 pounds of stores, including the Super 530 air-to-air -air missile matched to the fighter's nose radar. This radar and missile combination gives the Mirage 2000 the ability to engage medium-range targets even when they are flying far higher or lower than the fighter. The Super 530 is thus a powerful snap-up and snap-down weapon, giving the French capabilities otherwise fielded only by the superpowers. In the attack role, an Atlas pod can be installed for use with laser-guided bombs and the AS-30L air-to-surface missile. Other loads can include the BAP-100 anti-runway bomb. The more powerful Durandal runway cratering munition. Rockets particularly useful against soft-skinned vehicles. And the Beluga cluster bomb to lay a pattern of fragmentation anti-armor or area denial munitions. The Mirage 2000 began to enter French service in 1983 and has also secured useful export successes to Abu Dhabi, Egypt, Greece, India and Peru. The type is optimized for the high altitude role, but export customers also seem happy with the type's dual role capacity despite the rough low level ride and its high fuel consumption. This success can be attributed in part to the Mirage 2000's advanced design, but also to the basic reliability of the aircraft's systems and its ability to be refueled and rearmed in some five minutes under combat conditions. France is also developing the type as the Mirage 2000N low-level penetration aircraft with terrain-following radar and the ability to carry the ASMP nuclear-tipped cruise missile. More than 5,000 F-4s were built, making the Phantom II the Western world's most important jet fighter to date. The F-4 is now beginning to show signs of age, but in land-based models such as the F-4E multi-role fighter and RF-4C all-weather multi-sensor reconnaissance platform, the Phantom is still very much in service with the USAF and many other air arms who value the aircraft's high performance, strength and ability to carry four Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles as well as 16,000 pounds of ordnance on five external hardpoints. The Phantom was conceived by McDonnell as a Mach 2 Plus carrier-borne attack aircraft, but entered U.S. Navy service in the early 1960s as a two-seat fleet defense fighter, with two mighty J-79 after-burning turbojets and excellent combat radius. The powerful radar is matched to the Sparrow missile for search and destroy capability without external support. Naval models still serve in limited, though much updated forms, but the Phantom is now mainly a land-based weapon. Weighty though it is, 
The Phantom is a fairly agile warhorse, especially when fitted with slotted tailplane and slatted outer wing panels. This prompted the type's adoption for display purposes and also persuaded users that the Phantom could be used in the support role with ordnance loads of increasing complexity matched to the constantly improved electronics carried both internally and externally by the Phantom. It was the Vietnam War that made the Phantom. While most other U.S. combat aircraft have had at times to be withdrawn while problems were rectified, the F-4 served in increasing numbers for several roles with an ever-increasing assortment of weapons ranging from unguided rockets via laser-guided bombs to specialist weapons such as the Shrike anti-radar missile. Export customers generally followed the U.S. lead in role and model, though Japan and West Germany have now opted for much updated models with enhanced avionics and weapons, while Israel is considering a radically re-engined model. Electronic and weapon developments have continued ever since, and today's F, 4E and G are still potent warplanes. The F-4G is the West's primary defense suppression aircraft with advanced sensors and anti-radar missiles. The Vietnam War was a turning point in the development of U.S. warplanes, showing that sheer power, performance, and systems complexity were not in themselves sufficient. Modern combat demanded greater maintainability, maneuverability, and tactical flexibility, all provided by the F-16 prototype that won the USAF's lightweight fighter competition in 1975. The beautifully tailored airframe features a cockpit offering the pilot superb fields of vision from a semi-reclining seat that makes it possible for him to cope with sustained high G-forces. For the same reason, the traditional central control column was replaced by a side stick controller so that the pilot's arms are firmly supported. Right from the start, the key features of the F-16's design were agility and advanced electronics. The airframe features blended contours, wings with leading edge flaps and trailing edge flapperons, and computer controlled translation of the pilot's side stick movements into movement of the flight control surfaces. With flight entrusted largely to the computer via the hands-on throttle and stick, or hot-ass control system, the pilot can concentrate on the outside world of air combat. Key flight and tactical data are presented to the pilot on his head-up display, additional information being provided on head-down displays as required. The Fighting Falcon was conceived as an advanced air combat fighter of good, though not exceptional, performance, and success in this role has been ensured by constantly updating avionics matched to capable weapons, including the latest AMRAAM air-to-air -air missile. Such offensive capability is balanced by defensive measures that include advanced electronic warfare systems and dispensers for chaff and flares. The former confuses the enemy's radar and the latter decoys his heat-seeking missiles. Experience has shown that the Fighting Falcon is also a remarkably versatile ground attack aircraft, its seven hardpoints being able to carry up to 20,450 pounds of weapons for delivery with pinpoint accuracy. A limitation in many earlier U.S. fighters was their restriction to clear weather daylight operations for lack of the sensors providing low-level adverse weather and night capability. In the F-16 and other multi-role types, 
this limitation is being removed by the adoption of the lantern, or low altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night system, carried in two external pods. Lantern's navigation pod provides the pilot with an exceptionally clear thermal picture of the terrain ahead and generates cues warning the pilot of obstructions and other salient features. Here the aircraft is flying down a valley with hills on each side. The pilot has to keep the aircraft symbol in the square box for safe flight. No turn warns of an obstruction to the side of the flight path, the arrow indicating the side on which the obstruction lies. up indicates the presence of an obstruction in the aircraft's path and the course of action recommended to the pilot. The targeting pod's forward-looking infrared sensor provides for the acquisition of the target, which can then be designated by the system's laser for a variety of advanced homing weapons such as paveway bombs and Maverick missiles. In the lightweight fighter competition won by the aircraft that became the General Dynamics F-16, the losing contender was a Northrop design. But the company's effort was not wasted, for this aircraft was used as the basis for the larger F-A-18 Hornet required by the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps. The navally experienced McDonnell Douglas was chosen as prime contractor, with Northrop as chief subcontractor. The requirement was difficult to meet, as reflected in the designation, calling for a single design for carrier operations able to operate both as a multi-role fighter to replace the F-4 Phantom II and as an attack aircraft to replace the A-7 Corsair II. The Hornet became operational with the U.S. Marine Corps during 1983 and has also been ordered for Australia, Canada and Spain as a land-based combat aircraft. The airframe and flight systems have conceptual similarity with those of the F-16, but great emphasis was placed on reliability and ease of maintenance. The use of two comparatively small after-burning turbofans provides Mach 1.8 performance combined with greater flight safety. Together with massive fuel capacity, this also ensures considerable combat radius with a potent weapon load. The Hornet's two roles call for a high level of agility at all altitudes, and this requirement has been met fully. But just as important in such a single-seat aircraft are comprehensive flight and tactical data presented in an easily assimilated manner. The APG-65 Pulse Doppler radar is an impressively capable item of equipment with air-to-air, air-to-ground and navigation modes and able to search for targets out to a range of 90 miles. The onboard computer system thus generates symbology on the one head up and three head down displays using data from the inertial navigation system, nose radar and forward-looking infrared and optical sensors. The Hornet can carry some 17,000 pounds of varied stores on seven hard points. The normal air-to-air -air fit is a pair of sidewinders at the wing tips plus two or four sparrows under the wings. Air-to-surface armament can include free-fall bombs of assorted types, unguided rockets, and smart weapons such as laser or electro-optically guided bombs and many guided weapons. With reduced external load, the Hornet retains impressive maneuverability and is being developed into yet more capable forms with internal countermeasures, an improved ejector seat, and more flexible weapon capability.
The McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle is the Western Alliance's most capable land-based air superiority fighter and was planned in the 1960s to outmatch the Soviet MiG-25 Foxbat as a dedicated interceptor. The resulting Eagle first flew in 1972 as a massive aircraft with two Pratt & Whitney F-100 afterburning turbofans for a maximum speed of over Mach 2.5 and an initial climb rate of more than 50,000 feet per minute. The Eagle has also matured as a potent attack aircraft in the later F-15C and forthcoming F-15E models. The former has provision for strap-on fuel and sensor tactical or fast conformal packs for additional range and 16,000 pounds of disposable ordnance, while the latter has more capable radar and other modern sensors, two seats, and the ability to carry 24,500 pounds of attack ordnance, including anti-radar missiles. In the air superiority role, the Eagle uses its APG-63 pulse Doppler radar to search for targets and then track them automatically. Tactical data are shown on head-up and head-down displays. The basic air-to-air -air armament is the Vulcan 20mm rotary barrel cannon and eight air-to-air -air missiles, four ejector-launched medium-range sparrows, and four underwing short-range sidewinders. The Tornado Air Defense variant, or ADV, was developed from the basic Tornado IDS swing-wing interdictor aircraft to meet British requirements for a long-range all-weather interceptor operating on the boundaries of the UK air defence region. The type began to enter service in 1986. The main changes are to the avionics, including a new radar and armament. The latter is centered on a quartet of Skyflash medium-range air-to-air missiles semi-recessed under a lengthened fuselage which provides greater fuel volume and lower transonic drag. Tactical information is presented to the pilot via his head-up display the rear seat weapon system operator having two head down screens with 15 display formats for overall assessment of the situation and for navigation. Key to the Tornado ADV's capability in the interception role is the Fox Hunter nose radar, an impressively capable pulse Doppler system for long range look up, look down detection and tracking of multiple targets. The radar operates in conjunction with a new generation of cockpit displays and has good capabilities even in severe conditions of electronic countermeasures. The Tornado ADV is also designed for data link communication with friendly aircraft such as force multiplying AWACS platforms. The Tornado ADV carries one 27mm cannon and up to four of the ejector launched sky flash missiles a British development of the Sparrow. Four short-range sidewinders can also be carried. Another feature that differentiates the Tornado ADV from the Tornado IDS is the former's automatic control of wing sweep and maneuvering devices. This provides the Tornado ADV with very considerable agility, despite its size, and also helps to make best use of the type's combat air patrol capability. A loiter of 2 hours 20 minutes at a distance of 370 miles from base, excluding allowances for combat. There is still plenty of room for growth in this long-range interceptor, which has secured export sales to Oman and Saudi Arabia.
The N156 design was developed by Northrop during the mid-1950s as a supersonic flying trainer and light tactical fighter. The type is operated by the U.S. Air Force as the T-38 Talon trainer and by many smaller air forces as the F-5 series of tactical fighters. Emphasis was placed on modest supersonic performance with two small afterburning turbojets, on simple weapons, on low purchase cost through omission of advanced electronics, and on low operating costs by inbuilt reliability and maintainability. The initial F-5A Freedom Fighter secured very useful export success, and this was further exploited by the F-5E Tiger II, which appeared in the early 1970s with greater power, 7,000 rather than 6,200 pounds of more capable weapons, and a small nose radar for those countries requiring a slightly more versatile fighter. The basic design has also been developed for tactical reconnaissance with a number of optical systems. The most important variant is the RF-5E Tiger Eye, with a choice of several pallet-mounted fits and an enlarged nose, such as this rotating mirror camera. In its basic form, the F-5 is quite short-ranged, but an in-flight refueling probe, seen here in action with a C-130 tanker aircraft, can be fitted. The F-5 can also carry drop tanks on three of its external hardpoints. Production by Northrop and its licensees has lasted for more than 20 years, and this light fighter is still a valued aircraft for many countries facing only a limited threat. Success with the F-5 series persuaded Northrop in the mid-1970s that there was a world market for a radically upgraded version of the aircraft. Thus was born the Tiger Shark, first known as the F-5G, but later retitled the F-20. The Tiger Shark bears a strong family resemblance to the F-5, but is in reality a different multi-mission fighter with advanced avionics a refined airframe with improved leading edge root extensions and greater volume resulting from the elimination of the coke bottle drag reducing fuselage waste used on the F-5 and a single after burning turbofan offering 70% more thrust than the F-5E's two small turbojets. The result is a thoroughbred fighter offering superb takeoff and climb performance, including a mere three minutes to a point 11.5 miles from base at a speed of Mach 0.9. The Tiger Shark has five external hard points, three of them plumbed for drop tanks, and can carry more than 8,300 pounds of free fall and guided weapons, in addition to its own two internal 20 millimeter cannon. Among the guided weapons that can be carried by the Tiger Shark are the Sparrow, seen here in the form of an AIM-7F launch and successful flight. Got a good one going, Virgil. Got fly right into a city box. The wingtip rails can carry two Sidewinder short-range air-to-air missiles. The Tiger Shark can also be used for ground attack with a wide range of unguided weapons. 
In this respect, the two inbuilt cannon can be supplemented by three 30 millimeter cannon pods, four pods for unguided rockets, or up to nine 500 pound bombs. Guided weapons can also be used, the natural choice being the Maverick, of which four can be lifted. The Tiger Shark is in every respect an excellent fighter. It has very good reliability and maintainability and combines agility with sparkling performance thanks to its aerodynamics and the rapid response of its powerful engine. Despite these virtues, the Tiger Shark found no launch customer, and at the end of 1986, the company decided to end further effort on the type. With its derivatives, the British Aerospace Harrier is still the Western world's only land-based jet combat aircraft able to do without any type of fixed operating location. Using its vectored thrust turbofan controlled by a simple lever in the cockpit for a short rolling takeoff with effective weapons load and for a vertical landing, the Harrier has given evidence of its unique capabilities for 20 years. But oddly enough, this has failed to spawn competitors. From the beginning, the Harrier has been fitted with an inertial navigation system, and today's GR Mark III features a more powerful engine together with a radar warning receiver and a revised nose housing a laser ranger and marked target seeker. Though 8,000 pounds of weapons can be lifted on seven hard points, a maximum of 5,300 pounds is more usual on five hard points for a rolling takeoff. Use of the head-up display allows the pilot to keep his eyes on the target while absorbing tactical and flight information, and this further improves weapon delivery accuracy. For all its cubbiness, the Harrier is a very agile warplane, admirably suited to short-range, low-level support. The latest development in the Harrier series is the GR Mark V, due to enter RAF service in the later 1980s after joint development by McDonnell Douglas and British Aerospace. The Harrier GR Mark V has nine hardpoints, two of them for Sidewinder self-defense missiles. The type also has two new 25mm Aden cannon with 130 rounds per gun in under-fuselage pods. The avionics have also been greatly improved, making the GR Mark V far superior to the GR Mark III. The McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II is based on the British Harrier series, but reflects the Marine Corps' desire for a model tailored to close support of amphibious operations over extremely short ranges with much larger war loads. The Harrier II also reveals U.S. expertise in aerodynamic and structural matters. The AV-8B first flew in 1981 and is a first-rate weapon platform thanks to its aerodynamic, structural, and avionic development. The larger but lighter wing is of graphite epoxy construction and has bigger flaps to aid the far better under fuselage lift improvement devices, which in the US model accommodate one 25 millimeter cannon and 300 rounds of ammunition. The raised cockpit with 360 degree vision is tactically better than that of the Harrier, and the pilot has both head up and head down displays. As with the Harrier GR Mark V, the most important weapon delivery aid is the angle rate bombing system in the extreme nose, and the U.S. machine's seven standard hard points can lift a war load of 17,000 pounds with a short rolling takeoff. The Harrier II's wing is a main contributor to the improved operational capabilities of the type, not least by accommodating large slotted flaps that help trap pressure for vertical and short takeoffs. The lift improvement devices under the fuselage, the new engine nozzles, and the revised engine inlets also contribute to the effective use of the 6,700 pound additional stall lift of the whole system. This makes it possible to carry a wider range of advanced weapons.
The Anglo-French Cepicat Jaguar is a single-seat aircraft powered by two after-burning turbofans. The result is a moderately supersonic, all-weather attack aircraft with stocky landing gear and high-set wing to provide clearance for large external stores. The small wing also contributes greatly to the Jaguar's smooth, non-fatiguing ride at low level. The Jaguar is in its element at low altitude and high speed. Here, the powerful flight controls and fuel-efficient turbofans make the aircraft maneuverable and long-ranged. The pre-programmable navigation system uses an inertial platform and advanced computer for extremely accurate approach and attack, even without nose radar. can lift 10,500 pounds on five hard points and also has a pair of inbuilt 30 millimeter cannon. The Jaguar can operate effectively over all types of terrain and has gained a great reputation for the accurate weapons delivery. The Jaguar's airframe is very strong and with its stall performance, the type can return even to damaged airfields for rapid turnaround and another mission. One of the most significant developments in recent fighter design has been the deliberate balancing of inherent instability with computerized controls to produce extreme agility. One test bed for this was the Jaguar fly-by-wire, which was destabilized by the addition of weights and additional flying surfaces. Already incorporated in aircraft such as the F-16, the Tornado, and the Mirage 2000, such technology will be further developed in programs such as the European fighter aircraft and the French Rafale. The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is often called the Warthog and is one of the Air Force's most important tactical aircraft. It is a dedicated tank killer and capable close support aircraft. The design was launched in the late 60s because of the Air Force's lack of tank killing capability in Europe and resulted in a large machine with an armor tub protecting the pilot and vital systems from most cannon hits. The A-10 can also survive if many of its less well protected systems are knocked out. The arrangement of the tail unit and twin turbo fans cuts power plant vulnerability and heat emission. Speed is decidedly low, but agility and fuel performance can best be described as impressive. The A-10 can carry a maximum of 16,000 pounds of ordnance, including most U.S. air-to-surface guided weapons, and in particular, the multi-capable Maverick missile on 11 hard points. The Warthog is designed for combat operation close to the front, so the time the aircraft can spend over the battlefields is important. The A-10 uses its excellent low speed agility to loiter between hills and behind the tree line until called in by ground forces to tackle enemy armor. Mavericks can decimate tank formations, especially with the weapon delivery accuracy provided by the pilot's head-up display with input from optional electro-optical and forward-looking infrared sensors. But the A-10 is also armed with a massive Avenger cannon in its forward fuselage. This has some 1,200 rounds of 30 millimeter ammunition with depleted uranium penetrators and is totally devastating against armor.
Once its weapons have been expended, the A-10 returns to its forward operating location for refueling, rearming, and takeoff on another mission. The Tornado is a joint British, Italian, and West German venture. And since entering service in the early 1980s, it has provided the Western world with its finest all-weather medium-range attack and nuclear strike aircraft, especially at levels as low as 60 feet, where it can reach Mach 1.6. The Tornado IDS carries a crew of two to handle the flying and the very advanced avionics and is notable for the stole performance provided by its swing wings, high lift devices, and two small but powerful after-burning turbofans. Tornado's considerable internal fuel and optional external tankage provides for a combat radius of 850 miles with an 8,000 pound war load. The swing wings helping to boost crew's range while also providing a rock steady supersonic low level approach to the target. control surfaces are operated through a fly-by-wire system and the pilot has the option of selecting automatic flight at altitudes below 200 feet using the inertial navigation system and the two nose radars. The larger of these is a pulse Doppler multi-mode type with ground mapping capability and the smaller is a terrain following type allowing the pilot to select precisely the height to be flown over most types of terrain. Short landing is made possible by the low approach speed and the use of powerful thrust reversers. This stole capability would be a major asset in wartime, allowing the tornado to land on damaged airfields and in emergencies on any straight road. An important weapon under development for British tornadoes is the very capable Alarm anti-radar missile. Nine can be carried, but in most operational circumstances, a smaller load would be normal. Thus, the use of all nine hardpoints could permit a mix of defensive and offensive stores, the latter generally delivered with the aid of the tornado's laser ranger and marked target seeker or optional laser designator. The tornado's tactical situation is monitored by the system's operator in the rear seat, the pilot receiving all essential information by his own head up and head down displays. The extreme accuracy of the navigation system and the smoothness of the low level ride make possible devastating first pass attacks even after long approaches and the tornado can carry a very wide assortment of weapon types. Freefall and retarded bombs are highly destructive when delivered with total accuracy. Other possible weapons are air-to-surface and anti-ship missiles, cluster bombs, incendiary bombs, and in decisive moments, tactical nuclear weapons.
the tornado's development is being actively pursued, for the type's already formidable capabilities still offer the prospect of improvement in weapon versatility, defensive measures, and flight control refinements.